Hello everybody, welcome to today's tornado related video. I have not made a video really talking about tornadoes much. Um, so I thought I'd do another one talking about tornado types. Because I noticed that some people, they get tornado types confused a lot. Um, like some people think that any spinning air is just automatically considered a tornado. So I kind of just want to debunk question, I don't know. Um, but we're gonna start from normal whirlwinds that aren't really associated with storms, I mean, except for gust nados, which we'll talk about in a little bit, and then we'll work our way up to non-supercellular, uh, non-supercellular tornadoes, like land spouts, water spouts, uh, true tornadoes, you know, like super classic supercellular, uh, tornadoes, and then, uh, you can see, uh, here, tornadoes part two. So basically, tornadoes, but bigger. So let's start with the very first thing a dust devil. Uh, these are actually pretty common in desert areas because they form when it gets really, really hot. It creates like an area of warmer air, and like that tries to, and like that rises up naturally, and cold air comes in and like replaces that, and sometimes that can cause. Like a little, like a little spin-up vortex to form, and that's what can cause a dust devil. And they just pick up uh, dirt and dust and grass and all that, um, like while you know it's there and spinning. And then we've got leaf eddies, which are also very common. They're very common uh, on like windy days in places with like trees and stuff. And one, because you know the leaves, and also. Uh, like people have explained before, it's like water, in a, like going around a rock that's in a stream. It like curls around on the other side, and that is basically what a leaf eddy is. But you know, with leaves, makes a little spinning air. You know, and we've got gust nados, uh, which is formed. It's kind of like a leaf eddy, but like a storm related and way bigger. Um, it's formed when there's like some strong outflow from like a storm or like a supercell, mostly supercells, and the um, sometimes I can like kick up dust and kind of cause like a little like spin up that can cause like these uh, uh, spin up gust nados, and yeah, they uh, actually they can't really inflict much damage. Um, there was a stage collapse in 2011 that people, some people think it was caused by a gust nato. So let's move on to non-supercellular tornadoes. Uh, we'll do a land spout first. These are actually lesser known. Um, a land spout, it's basically a water spout, but it's, you know, it's on land. It's called a land spout. So, um, how it forms is when, like, when you have, like, a boundary, with, uh, a boundary, winds, like, wind converges, and so sometimes that can cause extra spin along a boundary, and sometimes that can get caught in a storm's updraft and be stretched, uh, vertically, and then it can connect with the storm base, and then you have a land spout in the uh, usually appear as these really tall, like, dusty tubes. Um, they're actually less common than normal tornadoes, even though they seem like they would be. And then water spouts, which are actually more common than normal tornadoes. Fun fact, um, the Florida Keys gets about 400 water spouts a year, uh, which is just wild, because it's more than one every day if you were to spread it all out, like, evenly. They're kind of formed the same way, but except they happen, like, kind of hurricane season, kind of, time of year, like, late fall, or, like, like, like early fall, late summer, when the Gulf of Mexico is at its peak heating, and storms actually form a lot over the Gulf of Mexico. I actually have two videos, two YouTube shorts, uh, with... Alabama storms, uh, coastal Alabama storms. Very uh, cool, very interesting. I think y'all should go watch those two videos because I got some pretty cool storms that like sometimes the rising air kind of like with a dust devil and kind of like cause, you know, some spin. 
and a little, and then like the air does some spinning stuff, and then there's a water spout, and they're actually really common, like over Lake Michigan, and the Gulf of Mexico. They're pretty common. All right, now moving on to true tornadoes. Um, so uh, cone tornadoes. They are big. They can actually be very, very large. Actually, some people, uh, when they see really large, like huge cone tornadoes, they think it's a wedge tornado. Um, the definition of a wedge tornado is a tornado that is wider than it is tall. And a good way to tell if a tornado is a wedge, if it's not obvious, is to take, in your mind, take the large tornado and tip it on its side, rotate it 90 degrees, where one side is touching the ground and, and it just keeps going up until it reaches the other side of the more most wide part of the tornado and if it goes farther into the clouds then it's a wedge that's how i visualize it sometimes cones uh can be formed when there's just a ton of moisture in the air it's not directly correlated to moisture but uh more moisture paired with high values like wind shear and lapse rates can cause larger tornadoes to form. So it's kind of just what kind of environment you have that kind of can determine what kinds of tornadoes can happen on that day. Sometimes there'll be like a surprise strong tornado that even like forecasters, like the most, like the best of the best forecasters don't see coming. Um, because sometimes they're gonna just be like a little surprise, big tornadoes. And then rope tornadoes, they are very small. They can they can be very short-lived, but they can also be associated with pretty much any other type of tornado. A uh, supercellular tornado, really. Um, they Tornadoes, when they form, they usually form as a rope tornado and go through the whole life cycle and then die as a rope tornado. Or sometimes a tornado can just form as a rope, then die as a rope. Um, like, that's their whole life cycle. They touch down as a rope tornado, and then they die as a rope tornado. Also, if you guys hear any background noise because my dog's in my room, uh, sometimes, can, which can be bigger than cones, we have stovepipe tornadoes. Now, this picture, now this picture is actually a photo of a tornado that actually happened this year in June. It was it's it was so cool. Or I think it's May. I don't know. But it was so cool. I, I, I didn't I didn't see that tornado in person. I've I never have seen a tornado in person. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that now. Um but I've never seen a tornado in person but I saw pictures and video of it and I was like wow that is a beautiful tornado. Very photogenic. Um so these it also depends on what kind of environment you have. If you have high values and this is then this could be possible. Um, so sometimes, 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 uh, the higher the values, the bigger the tornadoes you can get. It all just kind of depends on how it plays out. The the widest of the widest tornadoes, the wedges and mega wedges. So wedge tornadoes are wider than they are tall. Like I said earlier, you can visualize it by you can say take the side and the side and tip it then you know you you can see it's a wedge um these are very rare they can form under very extreme conditions like very high cape shear uh by the way for people who don't really know much about weather and stuff cape stands for convective available potential energy so basically it's a measure measure me, measure of energy in the atmosphere and we very useful to determine what kinds of storms and what kinds of tornadoes you could get on a day, on a given day, or really, if any at all. And then we move on to the largest tornadoes to ever exist on the planet, Mega Wedges. Mega Wedges are so big, like take El Reno, 2013 El Reno. Uh, that was an EF3 tornado that was 2.6 miles wide. A fun fact, by the way, that is larger than Central Park in New York City wide. Now, I believe the picture I have here is 2011 El Reno. The 2011 El Reno at five, it might be 2013. It's kind of hard to tell which one is which because they just they were just so similar. Uh, but there are only a few mega wedges. Uh, not only, there's not only a few, there's actually, I'm sure there's quite a few, but like, like, 
recognizable, very popular, famous ones to talk about. Uh, one of them is Hollum, Nebraska, which happened, in, which is an F4 that happened in 2004. It's the second largest tornado ever. It was 2.5 miles wide, so just 0.1 miles short of being another El, of being uh, El Reno Part One. And there's also a mega wedge in Nebraska this year near Hyannis, Nebraska. The thing was like 1.25 miles wide. So basically, the definition of a mega wedge is a wedge tornado that is over a mile wide, um, which is already something crazy to think about, uh, because, uh, this stovepipe tornado, like, like, no, this, this cone tornado, based off, like, it's, like, you can see the dust and stuff, was probably around a quarter of a mile wide, and that is big, that is really, really big, uh, probably over a quarter of a mile, so, um, a uh, tornado being a mile wide, which is like four times bigger than that, is crazy. Um, so, yeah, these can, they're just tornadoes that are huge, crazy, like crazy, basically like unearthly kind of huge. It's so hard to picture in your mind. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, it's actually my first time making a video kind of like this, so let me know if you have any feedback. Constructive criticism only, please. Uh, um, and uh, I hope you enjoy this video, and I will see y'all in the next one. Please subscribe. I'm trying to see a tornado next year, uh, and y'all subscribing would also be huge motivation. Uh, uh, see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye.